Okay guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. H here for Octobead Media and today I am going to show you how to get started in Unity. So what I've done is I've loaded up Unity down here. I'm working on a Mac, as I will say throughout this tutorial. Uh, so this is optimized for Mac. Um, and there's a few projects that I've done here or worked with, but I'm just going to go up to New here, create a new project, and see what my options are. So I'll give my project a name. I'm going to call it Basic Orientation. You'll notice that I haven't put any spaces. You'll notice I've spelled it wrong as well. You'll notice I haven't put any spaces between uh, basic and orientation. Unity doesn't like spaces in the names of things. You can use underscores if you want, or you can just run them together, but don't use spaces. Uh, I could do 2D or 3D. We're going to work in 3D today, and I could add an asset package. I won't do that here because I'm going to show you how to do that when we get inside, but if you wanted to add asset packages before it opens up so that you're not waiting for them to load up in session, then you can add them here by using this, selecting the ones you want. I'm not going to select any for now, so I'm going to just create my project. Uh, the basic orientation. So this is your scene window here. It's also where you tab in various other things, but for now we'll just worry about the scene. This is where we're going to build our game. Over here is the assets folder, the project window. In the assets folder, which is currently empty, this is where you will find all of the assets for your game. An asset is anything that you use to build your game. That includes the levels of the game, which go down here. Now, because you might have assets that you want to use in one level, but not in another level, the hierarchy up here keeps track of all of the assets that are in this scene or level. Over here is the inspector. The inspector is where all the magic happens. The inspector allows you to tweak all of the settings. So for example, if I click on the main camera, you can see I've got a whole bunch of options here that looks very, very daunting. I'll go through what the important things are in a second. Same thing with if I click on the light. You'll also notice I'm getting these arrows, two of them there, two of them there. There's actually three. If I roll back, all I'm doing is rolling my middle mouse to, to zoom out. You can see I've got these three arrows. And that's kind of the first thing that we need to get into is basic orientation. The best way to do that is to create a solid and move it around within the scene. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. So in order to create any game object for your scene, you go up to game object at the top here and you have a whole range of options. We're going to use a 3D object and we're just simply going to have a cube. That's all we really want. And you can see now it's created a cube there. There's my cube and the cube is, I can see if I look at the scale, one meter by one meter by one meter. The default uh, unit size in Unity is meters. So what can I do with this? Well, I can drag the handles. I can click and drag it this way or this way or this way. So if I click on the red handle here, you'll see up on the axis, that's the X axis. Remember the axis X, Y, and Z from graphs, three-dimensional graph. That's the X axis, and it moves only in one dimension, just along the X axis. Same thing for the Z, which is generally considered backwards and forwards. This is side to side. And the Y axis is up and down. You'll, you may notice when I'm moving these that the numbers up here are also changing. So if I drag it this way, only the Z value changes, only the X value, and only the Y value. Now the cool thing with the inspector is I can also type numbers into these three boxes, which I'm going to do. I'm going to reset it to 0, 0, 0. Oops, that first 0 didn't go in. And that puts it right back at the start where it was. That is my cube. Now, the first thing you're going to want to know is how to move around and look around because this is a 3D platform. So if you hold the Alt key on the keyboard and you le hold the left click, you can move and you can look at a different orientation. You can look around, underneath, side to side, so on and so forth. This will become very, very useful once you start building your scene. If you hold the uh, Alt key on the keyboard and hold the middle mouse button, you can move side to side like this. And as I said before, if you roll the middle mouse button backwards and forwards, then you can zoom in and out. You can also press F on the keyboard to frame on whatever object you have selected. That's incredibly useful. So here you can see I've got my cube and I can move it. Now you can drag the central area and move it in all three dimensions at once. This is a bad idea and I'll show you why. Let's say I was to have two cubes in my scene, not one. And I'll show you how to do all this stuff in a second. Let's say this other cube is a bit smaller. And then let's say this other cube is a little bit closer to the camera. Over here and over here. From this angle, it looks like these two boxes, 
they are, are virtually in the same place. But of course, when I move it, they're not. If you grab something by the middle and move it around to line it up, it might look like it's in place from this angle, but then when you rotate and turn it around, it isn't. Okay, so let me show you some of the other tools. This is the movement tool. It's also called the translate tool. Using the name translate will be very important uh, if you want to do any of the scripting tutorials, because if you're going to um, use the translate function where you script, you have to call it translate. You can't just call it move. It doesn't know what move is. So that's the translate function, and it's this tool up here. You've also got the rotate, which allows me, of course, to grab it in the middle and flip it in all directions at once, which might be useful. Command Z to undo. Uh, I'm on a Mac. Control Z if you're on a PC. Uh, or I can just rotate it with this one axis, with this one axis, or with this one axis. And again, you'll see these numbers moving here. I can reset those to 0, 0, 0, and it puts it back where it was before. That's the rotate tool. Final tool is the scale tool here. Now, this is the one instance where you often do want to drag it from the middle. The scale tool allows you to change the size of any one of the three dimensions individually, or if you grab the middle, to change the whole thing up and down to make something much bigger and much smaller. And as always, you can see the scale here is two meters, 2.7 by 2.7 by 2.7. I'm gonna put this back to one by one by one. I'm not gonna put it to zero, otherwise it will be infinitely small. So these are the main three tools that you're gonna be using up here. You've got translate, you've got rotate, and you've got scale. These can also be found on the keyboard by using the shortcut controls W for translate, E for rotate, and R for scale. It's quite handy that these keys are all side by side because that way you can find them and you know what you're doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this from my scene. Now I can't just hit the delete key. It doesn't work. I go up here and I can right click. This is so you don't delete anything by accident. If you do want a shortcut command uh, for the keyboard, then you have to hold command and delete when you delete it, or control and delete on a PC. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a simple floor so that we can move our characters along, and we're gonna bring in a character so that we can actually move around. So I'm gonna create 3D object, I'm gonna create a plane here. A plane is as big as I make it in square, but is infinitely thin. It has no real thickness at all, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this plane. Oh, worth pointing out here, underneath the, um, uh, the axes here, you've got this little thing that says perspective. This can sometimes get clicked when you're working on something. Perspective is generally the uh, viewing method that you want to use. If you're doing a top-down game, you might want isometric like that, which is really useful for positioning things if you're top-down. But generally speaking, it makes everything look a bit weird if you're not top-down. So what we're going to do is we are going to import a character controller just so we can get in there and move around. Now we could have done this when we started the project, but I deliberately didn't do that because I wanted to show you how it's done here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to assets and I'm gonna go to import package. Now you'll only need to do this once per project. So as long as we stay in this project, I will only need to import the characters once. And then it prepares the package and I can choose here what I'm gonna bring in and what I'm gonna leave out. For now, I'm just gonna bring everything in, import everything, and it will start copying it across. And then because these are assets, they will appear in the assets folder down here. This is gonna create a standard assets folder. You don't wanna put anything else in the standard assets folder. You can put as many things as you like in this folder down here, the one that says this folder is empty, but don't put anything else in the standard assets folder because sometimes that can really mess up the character controller. If you do that, it can stop things from moving. It can stop things from working properly. And more often than not, when I go to my students and they say they have a problem uh, and something stopped working, I look in the standard assets folder and they put something in there by accident, okay? So you can access this either through the drop down menus here, which is what I tend to do, just a single click to bring things up, or you can access it through here with a double click to get into whatever that is. So I've gone into assets, standard assets, characters, and a first person character prefab. And I'm gonna bring in an FPS controller down here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the W tool. I'm going to bring him so his bum isn't sticking through the bottom, which it was before. And I'm going to bring in my character control. Now I'm going to push play. So now I'm going to enter play mode. You can see I'm going to move the mouse to look around. I can't see myself, of course, because it's first person. I'm going to use the keyboard W to go forward, S to go backward, A and D side to side. It's the standard 
first person controls that you might expect from a first person shooter if you play PC games. You'll notice I've lost my arrow, my cursor. To get that back, I hit the escape key and then I can come out of test mode. It's very important that you do come out of test mode. I'm just going to show you again. It's very important that you come out of it by pushing play again and don't just pause it because if you pause it, you might think you're out of it and you might start making changes. None of those changes will save. When you actually finally come out of that mode there, everything that you've done is lost. So always push this same button to get back out again. Okay, so what have we done today? Today we've created solids using game object, 3D object, cube, and you can have fun creating any of these. Trees are particularly fun. We have uh, learned about the translate, rotate, and scale tools. We've learned about using F on the keyboard to frame into the character. Command Z, or Control Z, is undo at all times. And we've learned about importing character controllers. There are other character controllers you can have a little play with here. Uh, the rollerball, for example, but don't have more than one character controller in there at once. If you do, things will get a little bit weird. So here, I'm moving the ball around, and the camera is in a fixed position. You see, I could slave the camera to the ball, but I won't. We'll do that in another tutorial. Okay, this has been Dr. H for Octobeard Media, doing the first basic orientation of Unity tutorials. I hope it's been very useful for you guys. Do jump in, have a practice, and let me know how you get on in the comments section. Thank you very much.